it is time for our first assignment, which gets introduced in Unit 4. And we're going to start compositing full art projects now with this first assignment, which means we get a little bit longer to work on it than an exercise, not that much longer. And we have kind of higher expectations of the project that you're going to try to refine this one to a finish that you're happy with. The good news is, as long as you submit something by the deadline, you can resubmit then through to the very end of the class with improvements to get a better grade, to have a better portfolio project. This is our landscape and setting design project. So this will be compositing together photographic pixels of fantasy landscapes, but we get to design the fantasy. We also have in this module question of the day number one, which we'll talk about more next class. But if you want to start tackling it and thinking about it, it's what are the advantages and disadvantages of digital raster art, which means pixel based, right, uh, over traditional art. There are advantages, there are disadvantages. For instance, here is a composite kind of fantasy landscape made with pixels. Here is a fantasy landscape made with ink and watercolor on rice paper. One is, this is traditional, this is digital. In order to get full credit for these questions of the day, you need to answer these questions with more than 100 words that are on the topic, right? Answering all parts of the question. But it's a discussion, so this is going to help inform a class discussion we have. And this is due on January 29th by midnight, which means as long as you start it tonight, right, we will keep finishing up. And then you can resubmit these as well. The only things if you miss the deadline you get a zero on are our exams <laughs> and our assignments. Okay, so it's great that we've already started that discussion now that we can reflect on some of the advantages of what we've done. Some past examples. Your homework is to make a sketch, preferably a vertical sketch and a horizontal sketch for the kind of fantasy landscape you want. And they can be a really simple sketch. Think of it like puzzle pieces, like how you're going to composite different things together. That sketch is going to help you know what to look for when you're searching for, for image reference, whether it's a desert, whether it's an Arctic wasteland, right? Whether it's a post-apocalyptic city. The one thing you're not allowed to have is what's called figurative content in these landscapes. Think of these as backdrops for a scene, like the backdrop for a play, a clean background plate for a video game. Because later on, we're going to have the chance to animate characters on top of this setting. So we don't want anything we would expect to be alive and moving. And that includes things like fire, right? Because we, we wouldn't ever see a still image of fire if other things are animated. So this is the still background. So if you have vehicles, make sure they're like vehicles that look like they can't, like they're ruins of vehicles, right? Or they're not in the process of moving those vehicles. So one basic way, this kind of relates to exercise one, we have to gather lots of references and we want those references to be at least a thousand pixels in their smallest dimension. Using Google image search, using Pixabay. This is one that's public domain from NASA. Anything that's from NASA is public domain because it's paid for with our tax money. So all the Hubble Space Telescope stuff, all the James Webb Telescope images, which are some of the best quality images that have ever been digitally created, those are all available for any artist to use for any purpose. This is an artist fantasy landscape rendition from NASA of the surface of, a, a, I think, a moon of Jupiter, right? How do we know they're good pixels? Remember, they're going to pretty much fill your screen when you see them full size. The larger, the better. I like to get inspired on this project by cartoon backgrounds because they do a great job of really giving depth into the background by having a foreground, a middle ground, and a deep background. That's called three layers of depth. It's a good thing to keep in mind when you're sketching. And we'll go through this beginning of next class, you have your sketch. I'm going to show you how you improve your sketch based on the reference that we find. So it starts with a sketch. This is done by hand in a sketchbook on a blank piece of paper. If you don't want to keep it in a sketchbook, just take a piece of copy paper, right? But hold them all together because they'll help for the semester. And start searching for the stuff you want 
in Google image search at large sizes, and it might inspire what you want. So if you want like crystal castles on a rainbow plateau with gumdrop fountains, right? Start searching for those things, get a sense of what you'll be able to find to use, and then start layering them together into a composition. It can be horizontally based. It can be a portrait based where it's taller than it is wide. Either will work. So my inspiration for this one is surrealist art, which I actually created with uh, different generative art things and then composited together. So this isn't one surrealist artist. It's kind of a combination of Max Ernst and Salvador Dali and different things. A 19th century set design by this artist named Thomas Grieve. These beautiful kind of watercolors. Really good use of foreground, middle ground, background. And Looney Tune backgrounds. So what kind of fantasy landscape do I want to do? I want to do kind of this surreal desert thing. Right? Like a weird colored desert. So to make my sketch, you don't need to post your inspirations, but it's helpful to, to have them. To make my sketch, I'm going to go right to Google Image Search and to Pixabay. Actually, Pixabay is my preference because I know they're going to be high quality. And I'm going to start searching for, let's just try it. There's a lot of landscape photography. Surreal mountains, right? And I, I might right click and open that in a new tab that has potential. I might see sky elements I really like. Just by adding surreal, almost all of these are, are digital composites, right? So it's kind of like if you were to use video game wallpapers, like the example I passed around the room. A lot of that does some of the compositing for you, but it needs to be something you have the rights, rights to. And there are four pages of this, right? So once you open it, then you want to download it. This can help inform your sketch. I'm going to go ahead and down the largest size because I have an account. And you're, it's free to get an account. You just use an email. And it's better to have larger size. But if you don't want to create an account, as long as you choose the second to largest size, it won't ask you to sign in. And that second to largest will still always be above 1,000 pixels in the smallest dimension from Pixabay. So where did I put it? I put it over here. So when I view this an actual size, it's going to more than fill my screen, right? That doesn't mean that everything in here is useful. In fact, that's not all that well composited in there. It's like a blue halo around it. But I like those mountains. They're, they're nicely surreal. I might search, what else do I want? I want like a desert. So like a fantasy desert with one S. And these are all royalty free. These are all donated Creative Commons open images. This is a nice, nice one. For my fantasy landscape, I don't want any landmarks that are too recognizable, like the pyramids or this is kind of interesting. So I'm just right-clicking, open link, and new tab. That way I can see them a little bit better before I download them. I've already downloaded that. Download that one. Download this one. You're going to download more than five, but you're going to have to use at least five. Now, this is nice, but you see how it looks a little bit more painted? But I love that foreground element. So that might inform my sketch, which is what I'm going to show you in the last minute. All right. So now... I take all those ones I've downloaded, I put them into a folder, put them onto the desktop first. It's a faster way to do this. Let me do it this way. I'll just put them all into downloads for right now. I want to be able to look at them. This is only four, but that's good enough to kind of start sketching a vision. And I'm going to sketch digitally really quickly, but it's so much easier than just a sketchbook. So I want you to just use blank paper and a sketchbook. But this way you can see exactly how I think about it as I draw. You do not need to be great at drawing for this. 
you simply, I'm just using a tablet. We will be using tablets to help with this project. I want to see my resources. So first, I draw the box. Don't fill a page. I'll say that again. Do not fill a sketchbook page with your drawing. It's a waste of time and it limits your options. Instead, draw a box on the page. And then within that box, I'm going to try my foreground. My foreground's based on this one. So I might make a little note. That's my, my foreground rock. And then these mountains in the background, I want to put those over here. That's my middle ground. And then my far background, I like that moon. And I like that sky. And I like that plateau. So that's three. So then I might number these, label them. This is where I'll pick up on, mon on a Wednesday's class. So one, two, And three. So number four, where do I put this one in? So I don't want the, the face. I don't want the coyote because that's a figurative element. But I'm thinking I'm going to flip those rocks maybe and have it build up over here. So it will actually kind of look like this. That gives me enough to start. Why is this an ideal sketch? Because I can identify a foreground that's closest to me. We'll talk more about this next class. A middle ground and a far background. I don't have any figurative content that I would expect to be moving. So if I animate some creature onto this, it will be believable. And then you're going to post your sketch. So that will be the first thing we do on Wednesday morning is post our sketch. Get it into the computer, post it. It becomes our plan for then compositing. And you'll see that in the past examples. And then we just start bringing in our, our high resolution elements on top of our sketch and cutting them out like a collage and blending them together. That is it.